what is up youtube so for everyone who doesn't know i have been playing tornado shot the last few days and i have come to a very disturbing conclusion which is that a lot of people are actually using the wrong helmet and i can definitely see why a lot of people go on poe ninja they sort by the dps and they don't see that heat shiver is actually the best helmet instead they see that unfortunately you get a build where black sun crest is the highest dps helmet and we just go here very easily we can see tornado shots actually one of the most popular builds right now so you go to dead eye and you can see right here it's not really sorted by everything you see there's ice spear and barrage there's actually a little trick that someone showed me you can refresh the page and voila it automatically defaults it to tornado shot and we look over here and we look at the items you see black sun crest is at 50 percent so that's the number one helmet right and you ex expect to kind of see heat shiver as an option but you don't really see it anywhere i think it's all the way down here seven percent so black sun crest is a helmet that has stood the test of time it's been used a lot it gives you around 45 percent attributes at its max roll it's relatively cheap it fixed your resist it gives you a lot of elemental penetration so you might be wondering how could a helmet actually beat out black sun crest black sun crest just on paper seems absolutely batshit bananas however as i did say tornado shot is kind of an interesting state it wasn't that popular i think in 3.19 got a little bit more popular towards the end of the league however in 3.20 it's experienced the renaissance purely because sanctum tornado shot is one of the best builds in the game for doing sanctum you can do no hit runs really easily you can do the runs with very low gear you off screen all of the guards and it's really easy to reach a baseline amount of damage for you to pretty much one shot all of the bosses in sanctum now as we can see from poe ninja and i will be doing another video where i go over the most popular builds but right now you can definitely see a lot of these builds are amazing in sanctum outside of spark and venom gyre but basically spark or not righteous fire i mean spark and tornado shot are definitely some of the best sanctum builds in the game now Heat Shiver was recently buffed in 3.19 and I do think it is one of the most overpowered items that currently exists as long as your build does a lot of cold damage. And we'll go over why in a little bit, but PoE Ninja right now is at fault for a lot of people making incorrect choices in their builds, especially for a build as popular as Tornado Shot. A lot of people just sort by the highest DPS and they copy exactly what people are doing. And a lot of people don't even understand that most of the top builds on PoE Ninja for the top DPS are horribly inefficient and are complete glass cannon and does a lot of interesting choices that are purely meant to game the system. Now, for Heat Shiver, you can see here it no longer grants 20 to 30 percent increased damage if you have used the fire skill recently, or 20 to 30 percent fire damage if you use the cold skill recently instead it now has gained one percent of cold as extra fire damage per one percent chill effect and gained 100 percent of cold damage as extra fire damage against frozen enemies so as much as people like to meme on lake of calandra lake of calandra actually produced one of the most game-changing updated uniques in the game so let's go over the helmet choices for tornado shot because there's actually a few of them and this is actually one of the nice parts about tornado shot is that it is a very solved build to say like everyone knows you want two large clusters and you want a thread of hope massive but the helmet does have a lot of different options now we have the black sun crest like we went about and it gives you a lot of omni a lot of res a lot of elemental penetration and then you have the more well-rounded option with the rare helmet which gives you a lot of life 105 life or so it gives you roughly 22 percent reservation efficiency which is almost enough to run half of a 50% aura. It reduces the mana cost of your attacks, freeing up one of your flasks for a mage blood. Instead of using reduced mana cost of attacks, it lets you fill out your suppression. And basically, it's a very good well-rounded option if you want to make a more well-rounded build and have determination for your build. Now, back in the day, a lot of people also use Asenaf's Chant. This allows you to trigger a socket of spell when you attack with a bow. And technically right now, if you're able to get uh, Omni with uh, Implicit Corruption with Additional Curse, it is very possible that Asenav's Chant does count and it won't get counted as Trigger because it still counts as you, I think, casting the spell. 
and it won't have the curse penalty applied for when you use like a curse on hit ring. And most people used it for doing tornado or proccing hydra spear for some, what's it called? For what is that thing called when you have the the penetration exposure? And then for the extra curse. So this used to be one of the most uh, viable setups, and that's what most people ended up using was Asnaf's champ. But nowadays everyone uses Black Sun Crest or the Rare Helmet. Now the actual best helmet in the game is Heat Shiver, and the reason it's so good and it actually doubles the damage for most of the PoE profiles is it because it gives you 100% of cold damage as extra fire damage as frozen enemies. And most people don't know, but for Tornado Shot, almost all of your damage is cold damage. Like every, all of your damage is cold damage, all of the Fizz gets converted to cold damage, and then you gain extra cold damage with Hatred, and that's all you do. All you have is cold damage. So when you gain 100% of the cold damage as extra fire damage, you are doubling your base damage. And then we also gain 30% of cold damage as extra fire damage when we have 30% chill effect on enemies. So basically we're getting 130% extra base damage on top. And this base damage that we get is also penned because we use omniscience. So because of omniscience, we're able to penetrate all of the fire damage. So the fire damage is pretty much the same thing as cold damage. And there's actually a sanctified relic that makes this even crazier that I'll go over at the end of the video. And this definitely benefits from hatred scaling because all of the cold damage then gets converted and the fizz damage gets converted to cold damage and you get fizz's extra cold. And all of that cold damage gets multiplied by the more cold damage multiplier. And then all of that cold damage then gets converted to the fire damage. So you can see really fast how we're able to drastically increase our DPS. Now the easiest way to see how this works is just by taking a profile and just checking out the damage. So here, this guy has 66 million DPS, right? So you might be like, oh, this guy's damage must be absolutely crazy. So we're going to import this guy's profile over. So he has around 73 million DPS. Now we are just going to put in, so Black Sun Crest gives him roughly how much? Like 400 Omni. That seems like a lot, right? But we put in Heat Shiver. Uh, we're not even going to put the enchant, right? So you see it's down to 62 million. However, you can see here, the cold damage is at 624,000 to 1.4 million. The fire damage is at 49,000 to 110,000. However, once we put the chill effect on to 30, it's already at 79 million. And then once you click frozen, it's at 136 million. So this guy's number one pop goes all the way up to 136 million if you put it at 30 chill effect and frozen. Now, if you see here, the fire damage actually ends up at 824,000 to 1.85 million. And we had no fire damage at all before. Now, the more crazy thing is, now this is kind of unnecessary with a build that's this strong is that you can even put in Trinity Gem because we do fire and cold damage now. So once we put in Trinity Gem, replace our weakest link, and then we put in 50 Resonance, we are at 147 million DPS, and this is from 66 million. And all of this damage is real because we actually can chill and freeze bosses. Now that's actually one of the main problems is that why do people think that you can't freeze bosses? Because they don't really understand how freeze works. But we can actually test this out. We can go do Ubers. And you can see here, if you put Trinity in and you don't actually freeze the boss, you will actually never ever proc Trinity in your life. So you can easily tell if you freeze the boss or not. If you put in Trinity, you will see that without freezing the boss, you will never actually proc Trinity because your fire damage is top end damage is not higher than the cold damage. So that's why... We can test it out and we can definitely see that we're also able to freeze every single uber boss and give 30 percent chill effect now you might be wondering how does freeze actually work how do you actually freeze the uber bosses if you freeze the uber bosses shouldn't the boss be unable to move now we can test this like i said if you put in trinity now freeze duration is based on the monster's maximum life so in order to freeze the boss for Every 1% of the boss's life you do, you will freeze the boss for 0 0.06 seconds. Now, freezes with a duration smaller than 0.3 seconds are discarded. So that means you need to have a hit that does around 5% of the boss's HP in order to freeze the mob. Now, this 
is something that you might think is kind of challenging. But if you go look at the damage of this build, the average damage for the build is around 8.5 million. So you will definitely not have that much trouble in freezing the boss. And also, you will be able to get a lot more damage because you can see here, a lot of people use double damage on pressure points quick getaway. And that leads to a situation where your average damage or you will be able to attack a lot of times you do double damage and you'll reach that freeze threshold really easily. However, there's another thing that is super, super important. Now, freeze duration can be increased by freeze and ailment duration modifiers. So it's kind of, it's kind of a weird thing. So you might think like nodes like this increase the effect of non-damaging ailments. This thing does not actually help you out with getting uh, the freeze threshold to be lower. This helps out with getting your chill effect higher or your shock effect higher. If you want to make it so you're more likely to freeze the boss, you have to take this one cold mastery, 60% increased freeze duration on enemies. Then this makes it so that your damage, you no longer need to have to do 5% of the boss's HP. I think you need to do like 2% or something like that, and then you'll be able to freeze the boss. Or maybe a little bit more. Uh, it's some basic math right there. So 60%. So you do like 60% more of your actual damage when you have the 60% duration. There's also some other cold jewels. I think you can re-roll like 15% on a jewel. So there's definitely ways that you can get around it and you can definitely freeze the boss as long as you have really good gear. And it's not even that bad. I've actually done a budget setup before with Heat Shiver and I was actually able to freeze the boss and, I, and then the bow I was using, I'll show you the bow I was using right here. I was just using stuff like this. And this is pretty much... I think it's like a 580 or 600 PDPS bow, and then it's a heat shiver. I was using Yoke of Suffering, two tamings, and this is my budget tornado shot build that I was using. And I was also able to freeze the bosses without a problem. And this is with Uber bosses, and the Uber bosses having like crazy ass mods, and it is 100% doable. And the numbers pretty much speak for itself once you look at the actual numbers that you deal. But having a uh, double damage definitely helps out a little bit. And I think, uh, let's see what hypothermia actually does. I think hypothermia might also help out. So hypothermia, 20% chance to freeze. Well, that doesn't really help out. So like you basically, cold damage can freeze and critical strikes have 100% chance to freeze. So if you already have 100% crit chance, that means you already have 100% chance to freeze with the hit. And, the, and all it depends on is how big that hit with the cold damage is in relation to the boss's HP. Now, you might be wondering, why does no one use Heat Shiver at all if it's such a good option? And the sad part is, PoE Ninja is to blame for a lot of things. And if you look at right here, this is with Heat Shiver. And you can see the number one DPS build is 11 million, 10 million, 11 million. And you look at here, Black Sun Crest, the Giga Chad Helmet, 66 million, 52 million, 39 million, 33 million. So if you looked at PoE Ninja you would be like, why would you ever go Heat Shiver, right? But the fact of the matter is, if you actually import over a Heat Shiver profile, so let's go look at Tornado Shot, and this all comes down to the configs that you get, and this is actually somewhat in my Twitch chat. So right here, we go here, we go import in the config right here, 12 million, right? Config, chill, not included, frozen, not included, right? Now there's one last thing, that also makes it so no one ever uses Heat Shiver. Most people just don't think you can freeze the Uber bosses, but that cannot be further from the truth. Now, like I said, Heat Shiver does unlock the ability for Tornado Shot and a lot of different bow builds to be played at a League Star budget. And this really cements the fact that Cold Conversion Tornado Shot is miles better than Elemental Tornado Shot. There should be zero reason at all to play Elemental Tornado Shot. Heat Shiver, hands down, blows out Elemental Tornado Shot. Now lastly, there's also this thing right here. Your fire damage can shock. And now because the profile has so much uh, fire damage, so we actually look at here, the fire damage is extremely high. You'll pretty much be getting 50% shock the whole time. So we're able to get a huge boost to our DPS because we have 50% shock. And that's just something you have to farm if you really want to min-max the character. So you have your fire damage can shock. And yeah, that's a huge difference. So we actually go back to that one profile we're looking at. 104 the 66 million. So let's go do it again. Just so people can see how much better Heat Shiver actually is. We take this number one guy's profile right here. 
We put in heat shiver and then we also do the shock effect. You can clearly see how insane the DPS goes to. So here, 30 chill effect, frozen shock at 50. And we go to 170 million for 66 million. So we pretty much tripled the damage of the number one tornado shot profile. And none of it is actually fluff or requires any buildup. And it's actually just kind of crazy, right? So that's basically a TLDR of the video as Heat Shiver is extremely overpowered and everyone on PoE Ninja, except for like 7% of the players, are probably playing Tornado Shot incorrectly or they're playing the wrong variant of Tornado Shot where they're not cold conversion. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you buy more or find more Divines and Mage Bloods than me and see you next time. Bye! Dead.